more about it. So let's just quickly, I'm, I'm going to skim through it. So it's not like we are going to watch one hour presentation. It would not make a lot of sense. But here, um, the ideas that are behind voting theories are not as recent as we might think. So Condorcet winners are from around uh, the 790s, voting in number around 1950s. And then we have some more modern um, ideas and theories here. So um, the, the challenge, of course, uh, with two options is to figure out, okay, uh, what is the best possible way uh, to look um, and to figure out how we can get um, voting done in such a manner that we do not waste as much time and that we find um, a consent system because of course it is presented here as uh, superior and why is that because to find consensus on everything it is not as easy as it looks like and the broader the community is and the the more it grows the the challenge or the, the bigger it is the higher is the challenge to actually find every participant approving or agreeing or supporting uh, one idea or the other and so the idea here is really to find consent where even though um, not everyone agrees or not everyone is 100% um, for for the, uh, the motion, they might not be against it, which sometimes it's more important than being for something. So here the idea is, okay, how do we uh, find consent to approve one or the other um, issue? And so the question is, okay, um, how do we find the best possible way to do that? And here is where uh, Pietro Speroni will, um, will guide you through the differences, will show you some examples. And his conclusions are more or less this, that consent scales better than consensus. So as I said, before um, the more participants there are the greater the community the the, the higher the number of participants there are um, the easier it is to use uh, consent since um, it is really hard to get a high number of participants to completely agree on something but sometimes people might not have an opinion or g just be in favor of something but not really agreeing 100% with the proposal but being not against it um, and taking more in a neutral position doesn't mean that um, something should not be done. And so um, in the end, many, 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 many voting systems end up being a consent system. And um, here, of course, then apply some kind of dictatorship um, about, uh, against everybody else this is how he um, he poses it but this is also one of the important lessons within a DAO um, it will never it, there will be um, there will be occasions where you do not agree with something or we are um, a proposal is not 100% aligned with your ideas but the goal is to move the DAO forward, not your goals, not your opinions, but what is important for the DAO to achieve its own mission. And here um, is where we see that uh, disagreeing and still being able to commit. So having this kind of maturity of not being 100% in agreement with something or even disagreeing it but the DAO decides to move forward in that direction is where we put our uh, we should learn to put our ego aside and say okay this is what the majority here decided and now let's push for this even though I'm not really agreeing with it 
and give still 100% to achieve um, this step and make sure that the DAO moves forward towards its goal. And he poses it here also uh, that consent systems are more common than uh, expected in the end. So here we have um, outcomes with multiple options. So if you have to do voting on multiple things, uh, there might be a single winner, multiple winners in an ordered list, first N, A team and whatnot. And here, of course, the, um, the goal is to make sure uh, that the um, best possible um, consented option is voted through. And here he goes through the whole idea of Condorcet voting, where uh, it's about voting one above the other. So for me, option uh, A is better than option B, is better than option C, is better than option D, and is better than option E. And so he grows through all these options. And here is where it is um, explained how to calculate in the end who is actually the winner in all of this or the the option that got uh, most votes and here is where he explains the whole uh, theory behind it and how it works and where he describes okay how Condorcet voting actually works uh, we have one uh, bot also in the Discord that enables Condorcet voting. So um, if you are looking for that or uh, to try that, let's uh, just let me know so that I can enable it and so you can see how it works. So there is also the question, okay, what is the uh, best voting system? Well, there is not really um, the best one. So it highly depends on the situations, it highly depends on the constellation of the um, of the system voting. So who's there? How many people are there? So here he also um, tries to explain it. I mean, up to five people consensus is pretty much um, pretty much a good way to do that. Uh, between six and 50 consent um, is also a really good way of doing that. And then he moves forward uh, where he says, okay, it really depends um, on the, um, on the, um, on the technique used based on what we want uh, to achieve and how we want people to vote upon it. So here, um, classical DAO questions, what shall we do about uh, multiple proposals, many winners, uh, need to reach a result, a strong agreement is possible, and so on and so forth. And he goes through uh, whole explanations. Okay, how do we uh, do this and how do we achieve um, actual uh, moving forward? So how is it able, um, how are we able to actually make sure that there are votes and that things are achieved and moved forward and the decision is uh, taken because that's the most important part uh, around it. So I again highly suggest to have a look at it and to figure out uh, and to learn from uh, Pietro Speroni all these theories behind voting and how to apply it to your DAO. Again the goal here is to um, find agreement within, within um, the DAO, within the organization to decide on things and to move forward. That's the most important part. So make it possible for the DAO to uh, move towards its mission in such a way that there is either, uh, again, consent, consensus, agreement, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to spoil everything here. Again, I invite you to have a look at it because it's really deeply interesting uh, in general for, for uh, let's say your knowledge and know-how about voting. Um, another really good article that I invite you to read with, um, and um, of course taking all the time to do so, is from Vitalik Buterin himself. So it's, um, as you see, we, we freely take inspiration, freely go through um, knowledge from ecosystems like Ethereum, like others, 
because I mean they are uh, front runners um, in these things and why not learn from the best so this is absolutely you are uh, we we do not filter or remove uh, resources if they are from another ecosystem because it's important to learn from others uh, mistakes or even better learn what works and try to um, apply it and so here he talks about um, decentralized governance which he calls dgov and um, also here of course it is necessary so um, there is this declaration of independence of cyberspace from 1996 which might be um, a really good starting point to try to understand um, where this comes from where the uh, cyberspace and the, um, let's say the history of it I mean 1996 I was like 14 years old and it was the first times browsing the internet already using I don't I think it was a 14 um, 14 BPS modem uh, analog crazy times and um, around okay what can we do and um, what are the things that are needed to be solved like uh, funding public goods so how and I think this is really recent also for um, our treasury and for the participant in the bridge fund okay how do we fund uh, projects that are valuable to a wide and unselective group of people in the community so it should be uh, value addition uh, not only to uh, let's say DJs or or traders or um, IOTs geeks or just people around identity okay the project should have a value to an unselected group of people which means that um, these are things like uh, protocol research client development documentation and this should be funded um, of course in this case we have the IF doing this but it is also an interesting point to uh, figure out how to um, use the treasury uh, for iota in this case but in the future maybe also for shimmer and assembly to fund things beyond uh, what a centralized entity can do and these are really interesting um, challenges and thoughts behind it and of course the same is valid for protocol maintenance and upgrades so um, also here to figure out okay how do we agree upon the upgrades and the maintenance so on-chain governance there is um, I might have mentioned it before uh, that uh, Tezos has um, on-chain governance uh, is called where there are proposals uh, which uh, with a period um, where the proposal is um, submitted on chain and then there is an expiration vote period and then a cooldown period promotion vote and adoption which means that they start putting it out the bakers which are uh, people holding uh, tezos tokens which means having some kind of skin in the game um actually start voting with their tokens so and they can also delegate voting to others so if they trust a certain maker or if they trust the decision taken by um, a certain group they can delegate their tokens without uh, removing them from their wallets and uh, strengthen like this the power of the vote and after the um super majority uh, i think of 80 percent is not made met they have to restart everything otherwise it goes through in a um, cooldown period where there is a test chain which is uh, launched and people can start testing their stuff uh, developers bakers exchanges uh, everyone involved is, can be can use this time to prepare their infrastructure and their depths and whatever and then um, it is where the um, promotion vote period starts so also here 
there is another way of um, um, voting for this so if everyone is is ready to do so and then in the end it is adopted where actually the code is brought to the chain and such and so this is where um, these questions also are highly tested on different um, on different chains with different methods and uh, different um, ideas about how to do so and here is where he um, where Vitalik uh, actually brings out um, his arguments uh, for the need to do so so here he is um, actually um, pushing forward okay how um, how much money there is and how much money there is needed um, to contribute to the development and so on and so forth and here he brings it up in a uh, chart and the idea here really is okay how do we make sure that um, people can take uh, the decisions and um, and move forward so that also the the core infrastructure and the core of ethereum itself is being decided upon and is voted upon and is supported um, so here brings the arguments about how okay how it is dangerous and so what are the problems with coin voting and i agree with this i mean we went through this already before the uh, the vote on the treasury and so here yes of course whales uh, are better at successfully executing uh, decisions than a large group of smallholders so if there is a group of whales that might meet on telegram or on discord and they can decide and say hey we have the majority already what do we do all right we vote for this and it's done and it's pretty clear um, coin voting governance empowers coin holders and coin holders interest at the expense of other parts of the community and this is also clear um, not everyone I mean um, as much as we try to do it as inclusively as, as possible we have to keep in mind that even at the actual market price of IOTA uh, one dollar or five dollars um, is and can be um, a week of, uh, of savings or even a month uh, salary for certain people uh, and we have to keep this in mind that we might be in in a position where we use our fiat to invest to uh, invest in technology to invest in projects to figure out okay how can i uh, leverage the actual situation to um, to to find a way to um, get something out of it and for other people just putting also even five dollars in in a um, risky project in a cryptocurrency in um, unregulated market uh, might be really heavy and so what uh, his point here is of course that only those that are wealthy enough or are early enough or have the opportunity to actually hold and buy tokens um, will uh, be the ones that can vote and take part in governance which is not inclusive enough and then of course um, conflicts of interest issues so um, also here if there is a particular lit well this can bring up to other uh, problems so um, one of the strategies I mean we are talking here about 2021 this was last year in August so it's not that uh, recent anymore because the DAO space is moving pretty quickly but still I think it's um, a really well written article where for example they talk about uh, delegation so again here is where trust comes into place where uh, for example I would um, delegate my um, my voting power for example um, to someone within the community so if we are taking decisions about 
uh, the development of Hornet, I might um, really uh, delegate my power, my voting power to Muxer or to Alex uh, or to other team members and give them more power to decide because they, in my eyes, they are um, they are experts. Um, if we are talking about uh, the wiki, for example, so decisions there, I might delegate my voting power to people in the DevEx team or in the technical writers team, which have more experience than I do uh, in, uh, in uh, how it should be done. And I think this is a really interesting way where uh, leaders um, might be, uh, let's say, think, uh, thought leaders within the community might, uh, through the reputation that they gain in interacting with the community and showing the, the interest that they have in growing the DAO, that they have into extending and reaching the mission, might gather and gain even more voting uh, power compared, for example, to uh, others. And this is really a um, really interesting concept to, um, to follow, of course. But of course, there are other issues like, for example, vote buying. So here is where we um, make sure that I can actually get your votes for a decision that I need because there is, um, of course, a way of gaining power over a decision and over people like here for example um, where someone promises um, some money all right to change uh, or to vote yes for something and you see this is uh, this is something that i think it's not really um really something that is limited to coin voting because i mean if I look at the history of uh, Italy, for example, which is what I can talk about, I remember um, these legends of people being, uh, of course, back in the day when uh, when uh, um, times were not as as easy as they are today. Uh, people were gifted one shoe, and if you voted for the right person or were able to demonstrate that you voted for a certain person while well, you were gifted the second shoe and of course i'm talking about some time <laughs> back in in history but um let's say that this kind of um vote bribe or uh, bribes or um vote buying is nothing new and this is clear that here the opportunities are even more so when we talk about uh, crypto and and uh, this unregulated market are even more so possible so um what is um one of the solution that he provides well limited governance so, for example, to use on-chain governance only for applications and not for base layers. So in this case, it would be okay. Um, let's decide um, which dApp should be the first one to get funding. Let's decide which dApp should be the next one to uh, be included in the next uh, DJ news. Uh, whatever decision has to be taken let's do that there but not for the base layers itself so um, let's not do that on chain but let's do that for example off chain uh, so here is where you could change it like that um, limit governance to fixed parameters choices for example so this is what uniswap for example this uh, does this and um, so here is also where the governance gets control over uh, fewer features over time, for example. Um, adding time delays. So here is where they say, hey, okay, let's do, um, let's do this decision. 
make sure that uh, the vote that you do locks in the tokens for example or uh, you have to keep your tokens locked for a certain time before uh, the vote counts so that it is possible to um, to move and fork for example the technology still be able to retain uh, let's say some kind of value before uh, the mm, the old chain is dropped or something like that so here as you can see forking a uh, forking a protocol forking a technology might not be so um, out of question if you want i mean we see we've seen that in um, with ethereum classic back in the day after the DAO hack and uh, therefore let's say that it is not something to um, frown upon actually and even more so with applications where there might be a bug there might be something that is not possible to just roll back a fork is something that happens and a fork itself is actually a very um, a very common thing in open source software and I mean there are many other um, uh, thank you IOTA I will look into that later um, um, back to the point oh, come on I missed it I, I lost it now yes uh, open source for example uh, open office which has been forked to libra office because the leaders of the community were not um, were not in agreement over something and so they just forked it and uh, one community continues uh, continued uh, working on open office and another one launched libra office and uh, continued uh, working uh, there um mm, mm, mm. all right so there is um, iota uh, 10t that is mentioned uh, that noted hey i'm uh, mentioning vote buying so uh, vote buying scenario is in liquid democracies below and he posts also the link he's doing it in speculations let me just bring that also in the iota dow pioneers channel which is right here so here's the source on page 26 you will find the passage here which i'm also copying IoT, iota i'm sorry if i'm just copy pasting but here it is so that uh, other people have access uh, to the same resource and are looking at what we are looking at and also here the um the idea here or the explanation here is in order to prevent vote buying a digital voting system must be unable to provide proof uh, cryptographic or otherwise of which way a vote was cast if you cannot prove which box you ticked then an attacker cannot credibly dictate your choices in liquid democracy though you need that very capability a delegate needs the ability to prove to original ho uh, vote holders how they voted and interesting interesting concept here uh, because of course it might sound um, counterintuitive but that's actually the point um, in a system where you have liquid democracy that we will look at um, shortly after uh, I close up uh, here with Vitalik's article um, since you are delegated and people are putting trust into you it is important that you are transparently voting and um, demonstrating the choices that you followed let's say your uh, delegate delegates oh, come on employees all right the people that are delegating their voting power to you uh, that you are voting with confidence exactly what they were required uh, requiring you or asking you to vote upon or verifying at least that your vote went through and decide if next time they're going to delegate their voting power again because maybe you voted something they did not really trust or uh, they they might have a different opinion the next time 
Another solution he proposes here is non-coin driven governance, um, which is a concept where uh, Dundave is having um, a really, um, let's say, important process to understand uh, how to do it and how to move forward in that direction. So actually to have one person, one vote uh, by, for example, uh, a proof of personhood. So there are, um, here's a review of different ways of doing this. So uh, there are also projects like Proof of Humanity and Bright ID, where um, you connect with others within the community and get verified by the community itself. So it is um, a way where um, I vouch, let's say I vouch for, for Philo to dumb Dave. Um, then there is um, probably, I don't know, let's say Alpha Raw, which is verifying um, almost legend, which is giving his approval. And then in the end, um, we agree that Philo is unique, that Philo is him, is a person. And within our ecosystem and community, his identity is validated. And uh, from that point on, within our ecosystem community, DAP or DAO can start voting. And we know that there are uh, no uh, CBL attacks, for example, because um, he might not be able to um, generate another identity to vote uh, a second time or a third time or to cheat the vote in general. Uh, same for Bright ID, which has also a really similar system where they um, try to implement exactly this proof of personhood. Um, another application that does it in a not as much um, um, human driven way, but tries to do something similar is Keybase, where you can um, actually add let's say different identities um, to the same account and so you can verify that uh, you are at least managing the same that twitter account that you have though that uh, website uh, that you are that address for example and so you can automate it and of course there is no real verification just automated and um, it has uh, its limits um, where you do not have at least to give a third party or a fourth party um, your ad identification or the, the opportunity to record you or whatever. I mean, uh, it's not like everyone would like to give me their, their picture or um, let me record them talking about something so that I can prove afterwards that he was verified. There are many challenges also in that direction. Um, but still within a small community, this is um, something that is possible, I'd say, to do and to uh, repeat. Um, thank you for muting. All right, then there are other proofs like uh, proof of participation. Uh, this is what uh, POAPs are doing. So they say, okay, um, for every time you participate, you get a badge. All right, this is, uh, yeah. You get a badge and then after a certain collection of badges or if we met at the certain events or if um, you were um, participating in all the governance calls or in at least 75% or whatever parameters you want to set, you get a certain uh, pop, a certain badge. And with that badge, you get access uh, to voting or you get power to uh, take decisions and such. Uh, Pops is a, I mean, it is a really nice application. I love it myself. Um, let's say that um, Sooniverse is trying something similar with their badges, I'd say, but Pops work the other way around. So it's not that you have to be a part of a space. You can just get one of these Pops, which in the end is a nice, uh, I would call it NFT in the end. So it's uh, a token 
which has a nice logo on it and you can collect them in the in the pop application and they use this then in um, systems like guild.xyz if i remember it correctly where uh, i can decide if certain uh, people have a certain badge um, before they can join or uh, whatever so for example i should actually be able um, i should actually have my own guild here which i tested myself of course um, which is the iota test guild where i created a pop up in 2021 so this is of course some time ago and only by holding this pop up you can access it they have this really neat system which i would love to see also um, applied uh, to iota one way or the other so let me use this for one of my um, mm -mm -mm test servers here whatever it's just for the fun of trying this out yes i'm a human and here now i can actually decide okay how do people um ah oh, come on i just want to show you how they they changed it a lot they, they it was different uh, some time ago um mm -mm -mm. so i can decide okay you need to hold a certain amount of tokens uh, you need to hold a certain um, NFT, you need to hold a certain pop. I mean, there are se several conditions that you can decide. And based on these conditions, a person can access one or more servers, one or more channels within the same server, and possibly also participate in voting on one or the other issues. All right, so here we have it. Um, mm, 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 mm. for example i need a certain channel and they have to hold a token they have to hold an nft they are part of an allow list they have a po up uh, they are participating in a snapshot tr strategy or nand nor and so on and so forth and here is where i can start saying okay if you participated in 75% of the calls, of the governance calls, you get a pop-up. And now with this pop-up, I can decide if you get access to the channel where we do the votings. And um, and this is how they try, uh, of course, to find uh, ways to solve uh, non-coin uh, governance. Where actually everyone, just by investing their time, uh, can get the pop-up and investing their, their uh, their knowledge and participating in a hackathon, in an ideathon, which might be internal to the DAO and say, okay, let's find the best, let's do a brainstorming. And the people that participate in the brainstorm get the pull up and they get into the next level and and, and uh, grow in reputation with, uh, with this kind of things. So uh, the last solution, which is uh, what he proposes here, is of course to have um, skin in the game. So it's not only about um, about having tokens, it's not just about participating, but have also, uh, let's say, their money where their mouth is, and so make sure that what they vote upon is uh, part of a thought, through process part of a uh, feedback analysis uh, and where they really look forward to make sure that the mm, mission or the 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 idea grows and moves forward instead of uh, taking a terrible decision just to do that and maybe crash the whole DAO, the whole uh, protocol and coin value for example and um as I said, take time to read them through. Uh, these are really interesting um, articles. Um, and so um, they are inspiring, uh, totally. 
any uh, questions, suggestions, contributions uh, to this so far. So uh, I'm just server unmuting some of you that uh, were not muted and there might have been some echo. So if anyone would like to add anything, please unmute yourself and feel free to contribute. All right. If there's nothing, let's take the last 10 minutes to go through one of the um, older articles, probably um, in our in our um, week two uh, reference document, uh, where we talk about um, an article by, of course, Dominic uh, Dom, our Dom from 2015. So it's predating uh, many of our discussions around uh, the treasury and the vote, for, for example, so far, where uh, he um, tried to explain his way of doing uh, liquid democracy. And is here again, uh, thanks uh, IOTA uh, 10T uh, for bringing um, it uh, up to attention that, of course, with liquid democracy, where there is a group, a direct, um, uh, let's say, a delegation of votes to trusted parties, um, is one really interesting way of solving um, some of the um, challenges of making sure that uh, voices are heard. So, of course, there he goes with the whole uh, description of what is wrong with democracy. So what's wrong with direct democracy or representative democracy, um, which I'm not, of course, not going through. And here is his concept or his idea about around liquid democracy, where um, voters themselves are more or less, uh, let's say, full in control of the decision because they can uh, decide in a really fluid way, in a really liquid, uh, because of this way, how to decide. So in direct democracy, okay, I have to vote on every single issue, which might be a challenge because I might not be an expert and I might even refrain from voting because I am, I fear that my knowledge is just not enough to have an, an opinion or to effectively um, take uh, a decision that might impact on, on many others. On the other hand, we have representative democracies where we vote for a representative that is voted in for a certain time and then we have to trust his judgment. And this is where we are at more or less right now. And, uh, you know, sometimes what, uh, I mean, in Italy, I think uh, the law does not require you uh, as a politician to hold up to what you promised during campaigns. So uh, yeah, it's rather useless. And the idea of liquid democracy is where you can actually either, if you feel you're an expert, uh, vote on the issue yourself. So take things in your hands and say, okay, I know exactly what this is about. I understood the things and I'm going to vote directly on this issue. Uh, on the other hand, I could delegate someone uh, that then himself delegates to someone else. This is option uh, B here, where I choose uh, someone I delegate my my voting power to, and they them because I trust them and I trust their judgments. I trust uh, their reputation because they have built it and they are uh, going to lose it next time if they, let's say, uh, work against my own interests. But they themselves might be there and say, hey, I'm not really, I mean, I'm an expert, uh, let's say, in, in uh, renewable energies, but I'm not an expert in um, in taking decisions about where to build the next best uh, solar farm. Uh, so I might delegate myself, uh, my the, the, all the voting power that has been delegated to me to another expert. And even more so, there is the opportunity, like in option C, where it is a mixed way of, of doing things. So uh, there can be representatives uh, that get the voting power or people can uh, vote 
themselves. And this is really, really interesting concept to look through, to uh, take the time um, to read, uh, because it is really, really, really a uh, challenging way of um, of doing this. So here we see the example even in uh, uh, shown in even a better uh, way. Uh, and here is also all the reasons of why doing it and how to do that. And um, again, we're not going through all the um, all the ar articles in uh, in depth. And also here is where, for example, uh, distributed identity and blockchains uh, might support this kind of um, of solutions in in solving uh, real life. Uh, we have a breakaway. Yes, that's the polka dot jersey. Thank you for muting. Sorry if I gave you a server wide mute. I just react pretty quickly on this. All right, so, so far about uh, for today, I'd say we have uh, skimmed through the, the video without watching it. So ideas um, for Argon in voting theories by Pietro Speroni. Again, I absolutely invite you to uh, watch it thoroughly because it is really interesting how all this uh, theory works. Uh, we looked at the article by Vitalik about moving beyond coin voting. And this is also important for your DAO to decide how to do that. If it's about the NFTs that they bought, if it's about the contributions that they bring, um, if it is about the participation to the team, to the group and uh, the power that they should have uh, and so on and so forth. And with um, Tomorrow we might start, uh, since we have only um, uh, three uh, meetings, we might start looking into some projects like uh, Polkadot and Uniswap or maybe Indexcope to um, figure out how they are doing it and uh, to explore uh, how they do governance, which might be really eye-opening. And then uh, if everything fits on Thursday, we're going through uh, some of these DAO operating systems. So these platforms that help us set them up uh, DAOs. So again, um, take time to go through these materials. It's not mandatory, please. It's your own education around DAOs. So take your time and uh, explore them even uh, outside of, um, of these uh, meetings. All right, um, seven minutes before we close, if there are any questions or anything that you would like to uh, contribute to the group or some insights that you would like to share because you have looked at other articles, for example, please, uh, or from from last year's, um, from last year's uh, DAO Pioneers group, please uh, feel free to uh, speak up. All right, I love silence. I say that then so far everything has been um, acknowledged because understood is really a heavy word for for such uh, meetings because it's just not enough uh, to, to skim through things for an hour. Of course, it takes uh, weeks, if not months of uh, deep research to really grasp the concepts behind them, but it's good to have a, a, an overview about it and to uh, learn about it uh, step by step and with some guidance. All right, um, if so, I'd say that we can wrap this up. Um, I thank everyone again also today for, for joining me and for uh, taking the time to uh, be together. And yeah, let's meet tomorrow again. So have a great time. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Ben. See you next time. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheerio. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks and catch you tomorrow. Bye bye.